In this presentation we are going to look at the dist function. And what is the dist function? First off let's uh, consider the data set we're going to use for this example. So if you want to try it at home. Uh, we're going to use the empty cars data set. We are going to use rows 1 to 8 and columns 1 to 5. So what is it what's going on here? The dist function is used to compute the distance, distance matrix. And what's that? Well the distance matrix is comprised of distance measures for each pair of cases in the data set. So uh, pick any two particular cases and there is a distance measure that can be computed for each two. And the distance measure is a measure of similarity between the two cases based on a set of numeric variables. So the default distance measure for this function is the Euclidean distance, which is uh, straightforward enough. Uh, you might recognize it from uh, algebra, uh, trigonometry in schools and so forth. So given, let's say, three numeric variables, I just picked out three here for this example, uh, the Euclidean distance between case 1 and 2 is computed as ED for Euclidean distance, subscript 1, 2 for cases 1 and 2, it is for the difference in values for each of the three numer uh, numeric variables square them and add them all up and then get the square root. It's a bit like Pythagoras' theorem actually. So there are other types as well, the maximum distance, the maximum measure, the Manhattan measure, Canberra measure, binary measure and Minkowski measure. Just as a remark actually, uh, this is not actually part of the dist function but it usually goes hand in hand with this sort of stuff that sometimes you might be able uh, want to um, transform the data and for example just to prevent one variable being unduly influential at the expense of others. What you might do there is carry out a standardization for some or all of the uh, numeric variables otherwise you might uh, compute the log logarithmic transformation find the lo use the logarithmic the logarithm instead of the actual value itself there's a few others there as well use the square root lots of them and you might it's a sort of a judgment call depend for each of the variables so you have to make that decision yourself based on your data so let's go to r now here's the data set X, this is the data set we're using. Let's uh, return that. So dist of X, here we go. Dist of X. Now, this is the reason why we are using only the first eight rows because what we have here is, uh, well, it essentially is an eight by eight matrix. It's a, a symmetric, uh, it's a symmetric matrix in that the sense that the upper uh, everything above the diagonal and everything everything below the diagonal there's a sort of uh, mirroring there and as a result you oh, that there's a lot of redundant information so essentially it's why the upper half is blanked out and but even then it's still actually quite a lot of information there so if you're dealing with 100 by 100 you'd have a matrix that comprises 10,000 elements and so on so the distance matrices, distance matrices can be, uh, become quite enormous very quickly. Uh, so here's a couple of the distance measures between the various values. You might sort of see that the Mazda RX4 wagon and Mazda RX4 actually are identical as far as the five numeric variables we are using are concerned. So the Hornet uh, Sportabout, the fourth case, has a distance uh, measure a Euclidean distance measure of 210.32 from the Mazda RX4 and so on. What we could do there quickly is to scale them. So dist uh, scale of x just as something we're going to scale all of the variables here but that might not be the case necessary in each case. Uh, again it sort of depends on the data set you're using. Uh, you will get a, a much uh, and here we have values between 1 and 4 or five roughly, so uh, much more uh, easier to use values here. And uh, that is it. We'll leave it there.